The best old time radio from people you trust. The Radio Nostalgia Network, where the oldies are still young. It's a foggy night, a perfect night for a mystery. Tonight, Mystery Theater presents mystery thriller. From London, we present the Francis Durbridge serial, Paul Temple and the Geneva Mystery. Episode 4, A Change of Mind. Read it yourself. Ooh, written in block capitals. Be careful, you're too young to die, Mr. Clayton. Who do you think sent this, Paul? Morris Lonsdale? It could have been, if it was Lonsdale you saw on the boat. Well, whoever sent it, Danny certainly took it seriously. Yes, it scared the pants off him. Oh, we're off. We'd better get ourselves sorted out. Give me that case, Steve. I'll put it over here. been an excellent dinner, but oh dear, I do feel sleepy. <laughs> Why don't you go to bed now, Steve? Yes, I think I will. Hope you sleep well, Steve. See you tomorrow. Yes. Good night, Danny. Good night. <sighs> oh, gee, it suddenly hit me too. <laughs> How long have you been over here, Clayton? Oh, Danny, please. All right, Danny. What, you mean in Europe? Yes. Oh, about five years. Where did you come from originally? Well, I was born in New York, but my people moved out to California about 20 years ago. Are your parents still there? Uh, no, both my folks are dead. Oh, I'm sorry. They lost their lives in a fire. A large apartment house was razed to the ground. Two of the old movie stars were killed. Twenty-two people lost their lives that night. What a terrible thing. Yeah, sure was. Fortunately, I was in the basement at the time talking to a friend of mine. I was one of the... One of the lucky ones. Oh, gee, I'm worse than Steve. I'm <laughs> yawning my head off. I'll get the bill. Oh, here we are, 19 and 20. Well, I'll say good night. Good night. Oh, hello. Steve's not here. But I thought she said... Oh, here she is coming oh. down the corridor. Hello. Oh. I met Mr. Longsdale. We stood talking for a few minutes. Uh, Morris Lonsdale, uh, Mrs. Milbourne's brother. Yes, that's right. Do you know him? No, no, I, I've heard of him, that's all. He came out to Geneva when Carl Milbourne was killed. He's going out to St. Moritz. A friend of his has had a skiing accident. Oh? oh well, I guess I'll turn in. Good night, folks. Good night. Good night. Did Lonsdale say who this friend of his was that had the skiing accident? No, just said a friend of his had had an accident in St. Moritz, that was all. He couldn't get away from it, Paul. It was very pleasant. So it was Lonsdale you saw on the boat? Yes, it must have been. Paul, I thought Danny looked a little odd when I mentioned Lonsdale. Yes, yeah, so did I. Oh, oh Steve, you're tired. <laughs> I'll pop out into the corridor. Give me a shot when you're in bed. All right, darling. Uh, take care when you climb the ladder. Oh, you can have the top bunk if you like. No, thank you. <laughs> second service. Second dinner. Second service. Second dinner. Hello, Temple. Oh, good evening, Lonsdale. I was wondering if I'd bump into you. I've already seen Mrs. Temple. Yes. I understand you're going to St. Moritz. Yes. A friend of mine, Miss Sands, has had a skiing accident. Frida Sands? Yes. Oh, of course, I spoke to you about her on the phone the other night. Yes, you did. Well, the body has broken her leg quite badly, I believe. I thought the train for St. Moritz went via Zurich, changing at core. 
This is the train to Geneva. Well, I, I've got some business to do in Geneva. I might even stay the night. Oh, I see. If you'll excuse me, Temple, I expect the dining car will be rather crowded. Yes, yes, of course. See you tomorrow, I expect. Good night. Good night. Oh. Yeah. Are you awake? Oh. Huh? What time are we due in Geneva? About uh, half past eight. Hope we're not late. Mm, I hope so, too. I've got an appointment at ten o'clock. An appointment? At the hotel? Yes. A man called Walter Nider's coming to see me. He's with the Zurich police. He's a friend of cigars. Well, why do you want to see Nider? Well, for one thing, I want to see the Swiss report on the Milbourne accident. But surely the best thing oh, would look, be... Oh, look, Steve, I'm tired, darling. Let's go to sleep. <laughs> All right, dear. Good night. Well, I hope you mean that. <laughs> Paul? Hmm? Did you hear someone moaning? Yes, I did. Is it Danny? Did you hear that? Yes. Mind your head, I'm coming down. Uh, Where's my dressing gown? On that hook. Oh, yes. Uh, I won't be a minute. Danny, are you there? Danny, are you all right? Who is it? Paul Temple. Oh, what is it, Paul? Are you all right? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I'm okay. Was that you we heard just now? Yeah, I, I, I slipped and bumped my head. Is there anything I can do? What did you say? Open the door, Danny. No, I, I'm okay. There's nothing to worry about. I, I'm okay. I'll see you at breakfast. Very well. Good night. What was the trouble? He said he slipped and bumped his head on something. Did you see him? No, he wouldn't open the door. Well, a little while ago, I heard angry voices. I'm sure one was Danny's, but I couldn't tell whose the other was. Well, I don't see what I can do. I can't force him to open his door if he doesn't want to. No, of course not. We just have to wait until morning. Danny? Who is it? Paul. Oh, just a minute. Oh, good morning. Oh, good... I say, that's a nasty eye you've got. Is it painful? <laughs> no, no, it's not as bad as it looks. What happened? Oh, well, I was getting into bed, and the train gave one of those goddamn lurches, and, and my case fell on top of me. It was quite a wait. <laughs> How's Steve this morning? Uh, is she okay? Yeah, she's fine. She's just gone along to breakfast. Will you join us? Uh, no, I'll skip it this morning, if you don't mind. Uh, the attendant's bringing me some coffee. All right, we'll see you later. Uh, where are you staying in Geneva? We're staying at the Bellevue. Ah, swell. I'll phone you later in the day after I've fixed up an appointment with Julia. She'll want you to come out of the house, I feel sure. All right, then. But look after that eye of yours. unpacking, see? Yes, just about. Oh, good. Oh, we were lucky to get this room. Yes. It's lovely, isn't it? I love that view across the lake. Yeah. We'll go for a walk as soon as I have seen Walter Nida. Oh, I forgot about Nida. What time is he coming? Uh, he should be here any minute. Paul, don't you think that Danny Clayton looked a little uncomfortable this morning? <laughs> I expect he felt it with that enormous bruise on his face. No, I don't mean that. I mean, he seemed... Well, almost frightened to look him in the eye. He looked embarrassed. Yes, I know what you mean. I asked him about the arrangements, and he said he was going to phone you as soon as he got to Julia Carrington. Yes, we're supposed to be going out to her house this evening. Oh, ah, this is properly Nida. Yes. Ah, hello, Mr. Nida. Come on in. Thank you. Uh, I don't think you've met my wife. No, I have not had that pleasure. How do you do, Mrs. Temple? How do you do, Hanada? I've often heard Sir Graham Forbes speak of you, Mrs. Temple. Oh, Sir Graham and I are old friends. I saw him a couple of days ago. He's looking remarkably well. I'm delighted to hear it. 
Uh, Sir Graham told me that you are interested in the Milbourne accident, Mr. Temple. Yes. He thought perhaps I might be able to help you. If you will. Well, what can I do for you? I'd like to hear your version of the accident. What exactly happened? And it's quite simple. Carl Milbourne stepped off the pavement without looking and was knocked down by a car. He caught his foot in the bumper and was dragged face downwards for a considerable distance. Oh, how dreadful. Yes, it was a very nasty accident, Mrs. Temple. But not, I assure you, the fault of the driver. The man was completely exonerated. And there was no question as to the identity of the dead man? None whatsoever. They established his identity beyond any doubt. Besides, Mrs. Milbourne and her brother, Mr. Lonsdale, both identified the body. Yes, but Mrs. Milbourne has since changed her mind. But changed her mind? Yes, she's now convinced that it wasn't her husband who was killed. But uh, this is absurd, surely. Did she explain why she had changed her mind? Yes, apparently her husband bought a hat from a shop in St. Moritz. His old one was posted back to London. Inside the lining of the hat was a note. Yes, it was in did. Carl Milbourne's handwriting and was written two days after the accident. And what did the note say? Well, as far as I remember, it said, Please don't worry. Have seen Randolph. Everything will be all right. We'll get in touch later. Ah, now I understand what you are doing in Switzerland, Mr. Temple. I take it you are going to Sam Moritz to question the people in the head shop. Yes, eventually. But I have another reason for being here. Oh, Julia Carrington wishes to see me. But not about the Milbourne affair, surely? No, no, it's something quite different. Do you know Julia Carrington, Herr Nida? Everyone knows Julia Carrington, Mrs. Temple. But she's not a friend of mine, if that's what you mean. In fact, I've only seen the lady once. She keeps herself very much to herself, you know. When did you see her? Recently? On January the 5th. You remember the date? Very well. It was my wife's birthday. Ah. <laughs> It was also the day after the accident. Yes. Yes, that's right, it was. How very odd. I, I hadn't realized that. Mr. Nider, tell me, does the name Richard Randolph mean anything to you? No, I don't think so. He's an author. He's written a book called Too Young to Die. It comes out next month, I believe. No, I've never heard of him or the book. Should I have done? No, 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 it doesn't matter. It's not important. Now, I don't believe that, Mr. Temple, or you wouldn't have mentioned the name. You've aroused my curiosity, my friend. However, if you feel I can help you in any way, do not hesitate to phone me or drop in the office any time. Thank you. You'll regret this. I'll probably pester the life out of you. <laughs> any friend of Sir Graham's is a friend of mine. Uh -huh. Goodbye, Mrs. Temple. I do hope we shall meet again. I hope so, too. I'll come down with you. I shan't be a moment, darling. Hello? Oh, Steve? Yes, who is that? Oh, this is Danny. Oh, hello. Can I have a word with Paul? He's not here just at the moment. Oh, well, would you tell him I've spoken to Julia and she'd be pleased if you'd both come out of the house this evening, around 6 o'clock. Oh, good. I'll pick you up at the hotel at about 5.30, okay? Yes, we'll be waiting for you. I'll see you then. Goodbye, Steve. Goodbye, Danny. Well, here we are, Steve. Oh. This is the place I told you about. I was beginning to think that it didn't exist. <laughs> well, you said you wanted to walk. Oh, yes, but you walked me off my feet. <laughs> uh, what would you like to drink? I should like a long drink. I'd like a nice, cool, dry wine. Right. Did you say that we'd been here before? Yes, don't you remember? About four years ago. No. There's a very good restaurant through there. Ah. Uh -huh. We can have lunch here, if you like. I like. <laughs> mm. And I certainly don't want to walk another inch. Well, if you want to keep your figure, you... Good Lord. Look who's just come in. Vince Langham. Well, well, well. It's a small world. Hello, Paul. Hello. Oh, nice to see you again, Steve. Hello, Vince. Well, when are you going to see Julia Carrington? <laughs> as soon as I saw you, I said to myself, well, there's one person who knows why I'm here. I'm seeing her tomorrow morning. You are? Yes, I phoned her the moment I arrived and was lucky enough to get the great lady herself. Really? When I told her who I was, I must say she was pretty friendly. Quite different from that creep, Danny Clayton. Uh, she's giving me half an hour tomorrow morning. Do you think you'll sell her the idea of a comeback in half an hour? Well, if I can persuade her to read the book, yes, definitely. Is that too young to die? Yes, have you read it? No. Oh, it's a great book and a wonderful part for Julia. There's no doubt about that. I take it you managed to get another copy, Vince? Another copy? Yes. You told me on the phone that your copy of the book had been stolen. 
Oh, so I did. No, I was mistaken. I'd left it in the drawer by the side of the bed. Anyway, I found it. Uh, I say, aren't you two drinking? Uh, I was just going to get Steve a drink. What would you like? No, no, let me do No, it. no, no, please. Oh, well, I'd like a dry martini, Good. please. Two dry martinis and some wine. When did you arrive in Geneva? This morning. Came by train. My plane was cancelled because of fog. If Miss Carrington does agree to make a comeback, when would you start the film, Vince? Uh, that's a difficult one to answer. It would take six months to get a shooting script, and, well, then there's all the finance to arrange. Oh, it'd take a year, I reckon. Well, I wish you luck. Thank you. You're certainly sold on the subject. I'll say that for you. Oh, it's a great story. Corny as hell, but just right for Julia Carrington. Well, what's it all about, Vince? Well, what kind of story is it? It's about a small-town girl who becomes a Hollywood star... She turns into a dipsomaniac, and one night Vince, she... Vince, give me a hand. Oh, excuse me. I think Paul needs some help. Uh, coming, old boy. Well, surely this isn't the main road. No, it's a shortcut. Ooh. Looks a very dangerous road, right by the side of the lake like this. Oh, don't worry, folks. I know this road like the back of my hand. I must have driven along it a thousand times. Was Miss Carrington surprised when she saw you? Oh, surprised? How do you mean? I mean, by your face, the bruise. Oh, yeah. She wondered what on earth had happened. I don't think it looks as bad as it did, though, do you? No, I don't think it does. How did you find Miss Carrington? I found her in rather a curious mood. I asked her if she'd received any more threatening letters, and, well, she just refused to discuss the subject. Uh -huh. And yet, before I left for London, she was in quite a state. That's why I consulted you, of course. Now, well, oh, I don't know. She still seems worried, but, well, more resigned, I guess. How old is she, Danny? <laughs> that is the $64,000 <laughs> question. My who's who says she's 46. Yeah, well, with all due respect, your who's who isn't exactly with it. Uh -huh. My guess is that she's 52, but she looks 38. I'm going to hate this woman. <laughs> We've arrived, Julia. Here's Mr. and Mrs. Temple. How very nice to see you both. Mr. Temple, I've heard so many things about you. Mm, nice things, I hope. Always nice things. <laughs> this is a pleasure. It really is. Thank you very much. Mrs. Temple, let me take your coat. Yeah, I'll take it. Oh, thank you. I hear you had quite an eventful journey. Well, it might have been worse. Oh, not for Danny. Fancy putting your suitcase so it could fall on you. Our well, sleepers are different over here. They're not like the ones back home. Now, no excuses, Danny. Oh, Mrs. Temple, would you like to see the house first while your husband and I have our little chat? Well, that'd be nice. Uh, come along. I'll take you around, Steve. I thank think you. you'll find it interesting. Thank you. I'm sure I shall. Take her to the library first, Danny, and show her the Matisse. Sure, I'll show her the lot, Julia, the works. Come along, Steve. Mr. Temple, I owe you an apology, and I just don't know how to begin. An apology? Well, I sent Danny all the way over to London just to see you, and, well, as it turns out, it was quite unnecessary. Oh. I understood from Mr. Clayton that you'd received some particularly nasty letters and you were being threatened with blackmail. Yes, that's true, but... Well, Danny does tend to exaggerate a little. That's the trouble. However, there's nothing for you to worry about, Mr. Temple. I'll pay you a fee, of course, and all your expenses. Miss Carrington, I'm not interested in the financial aspect of this affair. And I'm not worried. But I would like to know why you were worried in the first place and why you thought of consulting me. I received several very unpleasant letters. Well, naturally, I was worried I didn't know what to do. But yesterday morning, quite by accident... I discovered that the letters were written by a man who used to work for me. I threatened him with the police, and he came and apologized. Oh, it was as simple as that. Yes. I'm terribly sorry. I do feel guilty dragging you and your delightful wife all the way here. Oh, there's nothing for you to feel guilty about, Miss Carrington. We were coming to Switzerland anyway. Oh, I'm glad. You've set my mind at rest. I'm going to St. Moritz to make inquiries about a man called Carl Milbourne. I expect you've heard of him. Milbourne? Hmm. He was killed in a car accident in Geneva. Of course, I remember now. I read about it. A, a publisher, an Englishman. That's right. I understand he visited you just before he was killed. Yes, I believe he did, but I didn't see him. The poor man thought I was writing my memoirs. 
Oh, dear, the times I've had to contradict that ridiculous rumor. There's no truth in it. I wouldn't dream of putting pen to paper or voice to tape recorder <laughs> or whatever it is one <laughs> does these days. But it's no use, you know. I just can't convince people I really do want to be left alone. I'm always being pestered by newspapers and publishers and... Film people? Yes, they're the worst. They really are the worst. Then why do you bother to see them? I never see them. Danny takes care of all that nonsense for me. Oh. Will he take care of Vince Langham tomorrow morning? Vince Langham? Who's Vince Langham? He's a movie director. A friend of mine. I understand you're seeing him tomorrow morning. Did Danny tell you that? No, Langham did. What? He said he phoned you and you agreed to see him. He wants to talk to you about Too Young to Die. But this is nonsense. I haven't talked to a movie director in years. Too Young to Die? What is that, a play? A book. I've never heard of it. And I've never heard of Vince Langham, or whatever he calls himself. It is Vince Langham. I'm sorry the visit was a waste of time, Temple. Oh, it wasn't a waste of time. Don't worry about it, Danny. And keep your eyes on the road. It's awfully dark tonight. Yes, it is. But it's always dark down by the lake. I told you I had a funny feeling about Julia. When I got home this morning, I felt that... Well, she'd changed her mind about you. Did you actually see the letters, Danny, or did Julia just tell you about them? She showed them to me, but she wouldn't let me read them. Gee, I wish we had gone back the other way. Now this road's pretty dicey. How long has she lived in Switzerland, Danny? About four years. She originally bought a house in the south of France and then decided to... Hey, what's that like? Slow down. Is it a car? Yes, it is. A, a very large one. Slow down. Danny, be careful. For heaven's sake, get over. Look out, we're coming to a bridge. He's forcing you over, Danny. We're going over. <laughs> to the car. Oh. You you make for the bank, Steve. Yes. I'll I'll get him. Oh. I can't swim. Paul. Oh. I'm coming, Danny. Hold on. Oh. I tried to reach you, but Oh. Now, now relax. <coughs> relax, Danny. You'll, you'll be all right. Get out of here. Don't, don't struggle. I don't struggle, Danny. I got you. You'll be all right. Well, Doctor? Uh, you have nothing to worry about, Mr. Temple. Your wife doesn't seem to have suffered any ill effects. Of course not, Paul. I'm perfectly all right. May I get up, Doctor? <laughs> yes, if you wish to, Mrs. Temple. Oh, uh, tell me here, Nida, how did this accident happen? Uh, that's something we're trying to find out, Doctor. Anyway, I'm glad Mrs. Temple's all right. I'll take you downstairs. Uh, no, 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 there's no need. Uh, I have another patient to see in the hotel on the fourth floor. Uh, Mrs. Temple, I'll leave these tablets for you just in case you can't uh, get to sleep tonight. Um, take one just before you go to bed. Thank you, Doctor. Uh, thank you. Good night, Doctor. Uh, good night, Mr. Temple. Well, my friends, you certainly had a lucky escape. Yes. Uh. Did the ambulance take Danny Clayton to the hospital? No, he recovered consciousness and insisted on going home. And how is he, do you know? We haven't had a report yet. We've been too busy trying to trace the other car, Mrs. Temple. But I'll ring his home later tonight and get in touch with you. Thank you, Nida. We do appreciate your help. We both appreciate him very much. <laughs> Nonsense. You are friends of mine. Nice. Excuse me. Hello? Is that Mr. Temple speaking? 
Yes? This is Julia Carrington. Oh, hello, Miss Carrington. I was anxious about you and your wife, Mr. Temple. Danny's told me about the accident, and I was wondering if there was anything I could do. No, no, we're perfectly all right, thank you. But what about Danny? How's he? Oh, he's feeling very much better, and he's most grateful to you. He'll phone you himself tomorrow morning and tell you just how grateful he is. Oh, I'm glad he's recovered. Give him my regards. I will indeed. Mr. Temple, I'd like to thank you, too. I'm, I'm terribly grateful. I just don't know what I'd do without Danny. Well, if you're so fond of him, Miss Carrington, do me a favor. Yes. Tell him to take swimming lessons. <laughs> I'll teach him myself. Yes, do. Goodbye. Well, she certainly sounded grateful. I suppose that's something coming from Julia Carrington. It is indeed. Hmm. Well, Mrs. Temple, I'll say good night. I'm so glad you're none the worse for your adventure. Thank you, Herr Nider. If there's anything else I can do, please let me know. Thank you. I'll come down with you. We're leaving for St. Moritz tomorrow, staying at the Grisant House Hotel. So if you should want to get in touch with us. Hello? Mrs. Temple? Yes? Hold the line, please. There's an outside call for you. Oh, who is it, Steve? I don't know. I've just picked it up. It's an outside call. Oh, all right, darling. I'll take it. Hello? Go ahead, please. Is that Mr. Temple? Yes. Who is that? This is Margaret Milbourne. Oh, where are you speaking from, Mrs. Milbourne? I'm in Geneva. Geneva? Yes. I arrived this afternoon. Mr. Temple, I've got to see you. It's very important. Oh, very well. Do you want to come round here to my hotel, or no, shall I... I can't do that. I'm speaking from a phone box. It's in a restaurant called Chez Maurice. Oh, I know the Chez Maurice. It's opposite the Quai des Bergs. Yes, that's right. Please come here, Mr. Temple, straight away, if you can. All right, I'll be there in 15 minutes. I'm so glad you could come. It's kind of you. Do sit down, please. Are you all right, Mrs. Milton? Oh, yes, I, I'm perfectly all right, but... I've had quite a day. How did you know where we were staying? I, I don't remember Paul telling you. I knew you were in Geneva, so I rang up all the big hotels and... Mr. Temple, I told you my husband was alive, didn't I? You said you thought he was alive. Well, I was right. He is. How do you know he's alive, Mrs. Milbourne? I've spoken to him. In the fourth episode of Paul Temple and the Geneva Mystery, Paul Temple was played by Peter Cook and Steve by Marjorie Westbury. Production for the BBC was by Martin C. Webster. <laughs>